Oh gosh, it's recording. No thanks. <laughs> I think yes, I say that folks. every time I have to. This will be on the internet for a while, but only for members. <laughs> Interwebs. All right, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. Welcome to today's TIA Lunch and Learn webinar, Breaking Through the Noise with Quality Carrier Selection and Risk Reduction. Our panelists will introduce themselves shortly. My name is Jamie, and I'm the Education Assistant here at TIA, as well as your host for today's webinar. To begin, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items for everyone. First, I will read through TIA's antitrust statement. Discussion, comments, and presentations during TIA functions must not, one, refer to any past, present, or future rates, prices, or anything related thereto, two, include any reference to marketing strategies, three, include any discussion of boycotts of any person, product, or firm, or four, inhibit any member's employees from discussing employment with other member companies. Things you hear during the meeting that are confidential and private to TIA should not be shared publicly without its prior consent or used against or in competition with TIA. For questions during the webinar, we have two options for you to choose from. Both options are in the Zoom control panel located at the bottom of the screen. Please note that only you and our presenters will be able to see your questions if you submit your question through the Q&A button. The second option is through the webinar chat. Submit your questions as you think of them during the presentation using either option, and at the completion of the webinar, our speakers will answer your questions. If your question is not addressed during the webinar, we will follow up with an answer shortly after the webinar. Please note that due to the subject matter of this webinar, we may run long, but we will do our best to end at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Lastly, this webinar will be recorded and available for review within 24 hours. You will receive an email with instructions on how to access the recording using your TIA account. Please note that only TIA members have access to review the recording. And with that, I'll hand it over to our presenters to begin the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, all right. And uh, also thanks to the TIA for always allowing us to kind of share share our thoughts, insights, and use this as a uh, an education platform. I think it's really important for everybody to to kind of know that we're we're in this together, whether the market's good or bad. Uh, we we all sort of got to collaborate together. Um, with that, I'm Chris Ardondo, co-founder here at Cargo Chief, uh, where we help brokers, let's call it simplify the RFP process, get through options faster, and help you guys prioritize which lanes you should be winning uh, to rev up your sales growth. Uh, with me today, I've got Danielle Spinelli over with my Care Portal. Danielle, tell us who you are uh, what and what MCP does. Yeah. Um, so I'm Danielle Spinelli. Um, I've been here for about a year. Prior to that, I was a broker for about eight years. Um, and my, I'm with my care portal and my care portal is a carrier vetting and onboarding solution. Um, been here for about 12 years and basically keeps growing and growing with our customers and, you know, here to prevent fraud and make, you know, basically your broker's uh, process easier to onboard carriers. I, I remember when I, uh, I was booking freight and I had manual packets and it was mm -hmm. no fun <laughs> it yeah. was uh, it was uh very tedious and i was the the compliance guy and did everything yeah. and i had the credentials in the tms and it was like everyone's waiting for this queue of packets <laughs> yeah papers just sitting on my desk for me to get to and i'm like man what a waste of paper but other than Definitely. that it was also like it, it took i don't know maybe 30 minutes an hour yeah easily somebody, yeah mm -hmm. to get somebody through the process and I mean, we're going to talk about it today, but like checking references is important yeah. uh, and and everything else, there's a better way to kind of onboard carriers. So uh, if Definitely. you want to hear more about them, uh, check them out, uh, mycarrierportal.com. Um, so through today, uh, we'll have a few polls pop up as we work through our agenda, uh, starting with some of the problems we hear in today's market uh, between noisy things going on and distractions that are impacting your growth. Uh, followed by some signals that Danielle and I will help you uncover to hone in on those quality carriers. Uh, we're going to talk about red flags, uncommon flags, no flags. Uh, we'll talk about some things that we've seen uh, and, and do to help prevent that risk. When you get into spreadsheets and traditional vetting, sure, it can get the job done. But what else is being sacrificed when you're over-reliant on that transaction and sacrificing relationships? Uh, wrapping up, we'll talk about some things that you can do to improve your business uh, using better quality carriers. First poll, uh, Jamie, if you don't mind queuing that guy up. Don't worry, it's the Riddler. We're not going to steal anything. <laughs> um, 
So first poll, um, what's the biggest challenge you faced working on load boards? Uh, and don't, don't get me wrong, load boards aren't bad products. It's, it does what it needs to do, but we have to be more creative when markets are the way they are. Um, and for anyone else who, who answers other, if there is an other, uh, please plug that into the Q&A or the chat set, because if there's something we missed, I, I'd be surprised. But hey, there might be something else that's going on for people that maybe we didn't pick up on. Um, I guess, Danielle, while, while we're having some answers here, what, what have you seen, I guess, in the past when you were booking freight or, or when people talk to you about this topic? I think really the biggest thing for me as a broker was um, finding quality carriers, like whenever you'd post a load and your phones are blowing up and you're, you know, betting through those calls. Um, I mean, the likelihood of you actually landing a, a good carrier does take some time and it's a process and you're weeding through calls. And um, so that part, of course, is a time time uh, thing there. And then also having basically rates are just spot rates. You may have, you know, lanes with your customer that are based on yearly rates. So with jumping up and down through load boards, I mean, some days you can hit big and make tons of money and then some days you can lose big. So it's definitely a more of a gamble. Yeah, it, it yeah. looks like um, we're going to have, we got about 65% so far that have answered. Let's get, I don't know, maybe five more people. If you haven't answered yet, I haven't seen an other yet. That's that's good. Sounds like we're, we're kind of, kind of on point here. I, I'd say like for me, man, it was... I guess like back then we didn't have a tool like my carry package. So uh, that, I didn't have, I didn't have that. Uh, I'd probably say it was the, it was a mix between like the lengthy process, I think. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, the compliance at the time, man, if they had a heartbeat and a DOT, let's go. Uh, I, I was, <laughs> it, it just depended on, on that freight. And I think that's kind of like the higher rates piece. Like it's, yeah. I mean, did I have enough time to even like, get a better rate or did I, I I didn't even have tools to tell me what's a good carrier over another unless I had worked with him in the past so it's I, I'd probably say it was a mix of like the lengthy process I mean even complying like trying to get carriers through that compliance process um so I'm gonna let's see let's see what the uh Jamie I think I'm gonna click this in poll button uh unless you can I'm gonna let you try it let's see there we go and then share results. I guess I click that. Um, Danielle, let me use you as my guinea pig. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. I cool. can on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sweet. So, yeah. The I mean, a lot of carriers don't pass it. Don't pass compliance. It's. Uh, I, I think that leads mm -hmm. us to kind of this this first topic of. I'm gonna leave this up, but uh, moving on to this part, the noise. I think like when there's a lot of options coming in that I was sitting with a customer and um, I think it was in a span of 30 minutes, uh, they had like 10 carriers that called in with no yeah. idea who's on the other end. And it's, you know, like it was just options wasted. And it's like, if you're talking 10 time or 10 minutes every 30 minutes, it's like a couple hours a day easily. That is, you're just sort of like getting pushed into a different, different area like I mean what what else could that person be doing right and it's it's uh I mean it, that's creates a lot of noise I mean it's a perfect segue into the problems in today's market it's not just like because you're on a load board it's it's just the the vetting process and and that's like really have to try to get a fix on that because if you're if you're really talking to a lot of carriers just because they called in like I, that that's a lot of time I, I I'd encourage people to look back if you're a, a manager or if you're on the floor, like how many times an hour am I talking to a carrier that I don't know who they are or I end up, you know, talking to them and then just to find out they don't fit my compliance criteria. G give it a look, give it a, give it a, a, a quick understanding of like what your team is going through and where else their time could be prioritized. Um, we'll go ahead and stop sharing here. I think I, I, think I did that correctly. Uh, did that pop down, Danielle? Did it go away? Um, I don't know. On my yeah. screen, it's still up, but I, I oh, could okay. be just because gotcha. of where I'm at. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So so we actually had a question come in. Um, I'm all, we'll try to take this before we even get into the topic. So somebody hired a carrier. They found out it was double brokered. What do we do to make sure that driver gets paid? Um, we haven't paid our bill yet, and we're wondering if we should pay the actual driver directly. 
they know who the carrier is man so i guess it's sort of a, a loaded answer is kind of how i would get into that like i mean they they picked it up um yeah I, legally I, mean, I believe it's supposed to be the carrier the driver that's actually running the load with that carrier um yeah. and i think the biggest thing too is making sure that that driver actually belongs to that carrier and it's not just like uh, this week they're you know leased on next week they jump to another one because I, I mean I will say sometimes these double brokering situations can somebody can be in on it and just kind of be pa pass around back and forth so definitely talking to the driver and having that conversation having them provide documentation of what exactly what company that you know the truck belongs to he belongs to before you really make any type of payment um, as well as really vetting your bills uh, bill of ladings that you get back in yeah and, and you guys do some like uh, VIN verification and VIN validation that could help mm -hmm. prevent some of this and that right like it, it's it's it sucks for that carrier the guy who actually ended up delivering the load and and it's like how do you like I mean going back to what Danielle said like just whoever has the POD like I mean that that double yeah. broker probably doesn't have it and like even I, mean, I think we're, we're going to talk about some of this too like if that load gets picked up I mean does does the shipper know like who's coming in? Have you communicated that to the shipper? I remember when I was, um, we used to run a lot of freight here out of uh, Pasadena, Texas with Nestle Waters. And there were always carriers trying to like come in and we had unique uh, pickup numbers like tied to a certain plant. And it was like, our, I always let our shipper know which driver, truck, trailer, all that stuff with which pickup number, even though, even though like, you know, it was an extra step, but it was just another, another way to safeguard that, that, that carrier gets paid. It's uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that guy should get paid. Um, so short yeah. answer. Yeah, I, I think you should, but you know, just take following up on the POD and things is, is pretty important. So hopefully that so helps. Even that after vetting since the prior vetting, you know, wasn't yeah. quite there. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about some other some other things. So uh, when there's a problem, there's a solution. Uh, and I, I think, you know, what we've heard a lot of companies come to us from new brokers to those that are just getting off the ground and some that even have a few thousand loads a month. Uh, over the last quarter, companies are coming to us to sign up because they're we're all challenged to do more with less, where in the past it was grow at all costs, sort of the throw body model where People just add bodies to the problem, but that's <laughs> not the case anymore. We can't really do that. So now it's really grow revenue efficiently and as efficiently as possible. There were a couple of companies that signed up. Uh, one was talking to us where uh, we built up a business case for him and and where his like where his time and where all the noise was. And it was like they have a lot of opportunities. I think they were doing like 600 loads a month or something. And they have a couple of customers that has an opportunity pool of like a thousand loads a month. But the problem like to actually approach that is it takes at minimum seven minutes to quote every single opportunity. Like if you're talking seven minutes to quote every load to get through a thousand load, that's going to take like 13 days or so um, <laughs> just to like get to that. Like and nobody has 13 days. We only have like 20, 21 business days in a in a, in a month. So it's like, how do you, how is somebody going to grow and, and get to that? So when you're thinking of like the noise, where, what's really deterring you from approaching that problem. And the other thing is I'd probably say at least 90% of brokers don't know what problem you're trying to solve for your shippers. And there was another, another example where a customer came to us and they're like, Hey, like, you know, I, I'm back in my old ways of quoting and just trying to like go through the next thing, the motion and not really thinking about the problem that I'm trying to solve. It's not always going to be a, a price war. And if you, you know, quote on price, you're going to lose on price. Somebody told me that back in the day, uh, I think his name was Jimmy Martinez at one of these, one of these other brokers that I was at. And he told me, you know, that same thing. And, and it's like, you got to be more creative with with what you're doing and how much risk is out there that's causing that distraction. I think, you know, most companies are probably one claim away from chaos. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and how many, how many claims can you shoulder? Like it's, you know, for me, I had, um, I had two, it, luckily I, I wasn't, I didn't have too many, so I was blessed, I guess. Uh, but there was one, one time a carrier picked up our load of water and, uh, 
we i think he was at the shipper for like i don't know at least 10 hours it was a it was a shitty situation and i was like let's just try to get it delivered he ended up missing the delivery it was for like cvs or something and it was um very hard to get new appointments and he was like you got to get me unloaded and uh he was like i'm gonna throw this in the water and i was like oh my gosh no don't throw it in the water and uh <laughs> back where it came from uh, but it was like <laughs> It was a, it was a tough situation. And like, I, I, th I think that load ended up getting delivered and we ended up paying that guy a lot of layover money. Cause it was, I mean, we, we knew that like, Hey, if we send them in, we're at risk of like, it could possibly miss that delivery. So it was like, we knew the risk and yeah, it was, it was a loss for the load, but we still serviced our customer. Like some things just, I, I I've always learned, like, try to not yell at a carrier yelling and shouting doesn't get you anywhere. And it's no, especially when you're not. talking to a, to a carrier who's like, who only knows you by, by voice, they don't know you by, by face or anything. So it's, you know, very, very important to like, try to be as transparent as you can. And a lot of those risks do come up, but like, you got to try to try to ignore the noise and get through the distraction. There's another one where I had a, a load of, um, hard drives or, or some sort of computer chips and stuff that tipped over. I think they were recycled hard drives and they tipped over on some turnpike in Jersey. And the, the carrier was, I can't remember who was liable. Truthfully. I just remember our, our manager at the time was like this $30,000 claim is on us now. I think because we couldn't collect from the carrier, there were some, some issues that went on, but that was a big, that's a big thing. Like I, I, Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, here you go. I'll pay it. No, nobody has just thirty grand waiting to just go pay for a claim. So it's like, what's what's sacrificing? I I know like sometimes and you go to a board out of desperation to get freight and revenue going, but that doesn't mean that you should ditch everything that you learned to get where you are today and everything that you've learned as far as quality goes. Um, I guess Danielle, what what have you seen? What problems have you seen? Were there any any claim stories or anything? Yeah, well, just to comment on that, too. So, I mean, really, it's more than just money, you know, like, as far as paying a claim, like, maybe you do have enough money to write a check and go ahead and make it be gone. But the customer remembers all those claims that you've had. They look at that whenever you're bidding. I mean, it's a it is a process. So having that quality means a lot more than just writing a check out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had a I actually have a customer who um, just signed up here recently. They had a situation, basically it was a double brokering situation, kind of like um, we had on the Q&A here, but um, the driver the driver was not in on it at all, but he uh, showed up, it was a load of avocados and, um, you know, a U-Haul backed up and started unloading and the driver was filming and was like, I, I don't, I don't think this is right. You know, <laughs> like luckily got all the information from the U-Haul. Yeah. Um, but like, even right there, I mean, that goes back on to, Hey customer, this happened. And like, you know, I did not do A, B, C, and D really to vet them and, you know, having that awkward conversation with the customer. So really taking, um, you know, that was part of the reason why he signed up with us too, is that, Hey, I need to make sure that I, whenever I have this discussion with my customer, I'm saying, Hey, I, this is what happened before. These are what steps I'm doing to improve. Um, because really they do look at more than just costs. They need quality uh, brokers out there that are going to make sure their loads get delivered and not have a bunch of issues. Yeah, that, that's important too. Like, you know, there, there's a lot of tech out there, sure. But like, what are you doing like as as like an action plan to, and I, I'm going to mention mm -hmm. this a little bit later when I was working with the carrier, but like in in a preventative measure, like let your shippers know that, hey, like, you know, I, this is what we have in place to make sure that X has happened or like, hey, since we've put this in, like we've seen a reduction in fraud or or our coverage has went up or service levels went up, whatever it is. Like, I mean, that, right. that's a whole another conversation about marketing your brand and things. But like tr they, they appreciate that because wouldn't you wouldn't you yeah. appreciate if a carrier told you that like, hey, we had this thing happened, but uh, I'm telling you what we did to put that in place. Cause then even, even if people are going to do take that action to do something like, at least, you know, they're not some fraudster out there. Like they're actually trying to work on their business and not, not just leave it down the toilet. Um, so I think, you know, I want to talk about some signals here, what to look forward to zero in on quality. And again, here, I, I saw some comments already, but if anyone has any good clues on what makes a good quality carrier, Plug that in the chat or the Q&A or wherever, because I, I 
again, like a lot of people here are, are just starting out and, you know, maybe they haven't been blessed with a great TMS in the past. So it's anything you can do or can share be, be, be great for everybody. Um, I think some things that I did, you know, first I would start with my network in the past. So when I was at Robinson XPO, I'll start at Robinson. It was, you know, we had a great TMS. So we, we rarely had to go out to load boards and it was, you know, the carriers that I would consistently work with, I, I knew where their trucks were. They were never posting. They were always like, Hey, Chris, I'm going to have trucks here, here, and here. And other thing was like, I would make it easy for them to do business with me. I would give them loads that, you know, instead of saying like, Hey, can you do this one load? I, I already knew what lanes they liked. I already knew where their day cabs were and all of that stuff. So I would just make it easy. Here's my 10 in an email. Which ones do you want? simple question and they would just say one five seven eight and make it as easy as ordering from a menu at fast food like it's got to be that simple and if you're if your carriers are coming back to you now of like hey like i'm focusing on chris at robinson he gets my trucks first before i go to joe at tql or wherever it is like that's those are the signals and patterns and communication that you want to try to try to set up and reciprocate for your carriers. So if they're, you know, if they're coming back and trying to like get with you, do more business, you got to do the same too. You can't just like leave them to the wayside. The other, another thing at, um, when I went on to XPO that I had, I don't know, maybe 30 carriers, but they were like maybe 10 that were like rock solid with me. And, and I didn't always have the freight for them at, you know, at a different company, but I would still ask like, Hey, just in case I get, get loads like in this area, like what, where's your rate at? Just have a good idea. And if carriers are willing to share that pulse with you of like where the market is, like those are great carriers to work with. Even if you're not like booking loads, like I, we go to all these conferences and just communicating and networking with carriers is like, it, it's really, really helpful. Like even just to understand how do they look at costs how do they look at uh, is do they look at revenue per trailer per day or what what's what's the motivating factor for those carriers and and you know even for me at XPO we we didn't have I didn't have all the carriers but there were ways to look outside of what I had in my office and you know depending on your company size some companies have restrictions on what you can work with with different carriers and not every carrier is good but some of the things that that I learned was to understand frequency, like taking that conversation from, Hey, do you have a truck? No. Okay. Bye. To like, Hey, I saw you run this lane daily, or I took note of this last time we talked, this is, this is kind of what I have. And like, you know, is that something that will work with you and whether or not, like I've got a screenshot over here on the right, it's got, we surface some of that stuff up like frequency, but even if you don't have something like this, those are common questions that are going to differentiate yourself over the next broker. Cause th those guys, carriers don't want to live on load boards either. Like th sure there are opportunities for carriers, but they'd much rather like cut down the time it takes to book freight, reduce the truck order, not used all that, the new packets and stuff. Like if they can book more with their current brokers, just as brokers booking more with their current carriers, it's going to be a better, better outcome for everybody. I, I think too, even, like just understanding uh, haul, haul location. So like, is it head haul or back haul? It's not, just doesn't mean that they're headquartered in a certain region. Like for us, we actually look at the loads that these carriers are booking in the other direction to call out like, okay, they actually have taken a load for somebody that actually is a head haul or a back haul lane. But even if you don't have anything, you could still ask like, do you go in the other direction? I, I think some of the problems with um, the market is there's a lot of, everywhere carriers where it's it's so hard to have those conversations and it, it sort of oversaturates the capacity pool when you're looking at uh like just available trucks i was talking to somebody the other day that said that they're like all the carriers out here want to go everywhere like why am i going to call that guy i'd rather call somebody that i know that will take it to jacksonville florida specific city state city state and like it's you know just those those things that you can pick up on patterns and frequency to figure out who you're going to prioritize next. There's another interesting thing here, contact validation that Danielle, you, you guys do really well. Um, how we sort of like pull in with the MCP, my carrier portal integration is 
that carrier, the contact on record actually has to be the one registered with the FMCSA. How we like engage digitally is those carriers have to, they actually have to have access to that email. Um, but Danielle, you guys do some other things, probably flip over to this screen um, with contact validation and some of the risk assessment that you that you do for, for signals and things. I, I guess you want to comment on that part? Yeah. So um, as far as um, for um, verification part, you know, knowing who you're talking to. And I think a lot of this, like everyone's been kind of focusing on like, hey, this is the first time I've ever worked with the carrier, you know, making sure that that's verified. Of course, that's super important. This is your first time. Definitely treat that totally different. Your processes on that should be a lot stricter. But also, hey, I've, I've been working with this carrier for a while. You know, I've noticed kind of just like what you were talking about, you know, with the frequency, I've been talking to them. However, this is a new dispatcher. I'm unfamiliar with them. So we have a tool here where we verify each user. So it's more than just who's registered on the FMCSA. They have other dispatchers. Um, so in here, you can see if they've been verified or not. If they haven't, get them verified. Um, and we're doing that off of um, either like the FMCSA phone number or manually calling or having that main um, user add on additional users um, through that verification process. Yeah. Um, so that part's there. And I, I just think that's super important. It's a lot more than just your initial setup. Like you need to protect, protect yourself on every load, really just verify that you know who they are. Um, so that's there. And then uh, to the left on, on here is the um, our risk assessment. So kind of like where we're checking everything. So not only, you know, we were talking about earlier, you know, posting a load, your phone's blowing up, having the process in place of, you know, basically your first question should be, what's your DOT? What's your MC? Look them up. Should I waste my time on even explaining this load or not? So that risk assessment really goes through all these different steps to show you, do they meet my standards? Do they not? How are they working with other um, brokers out there or shippers? Um, you know, how 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 is this carrier look in the grand scheme of things? Um, so taking all that information in um, and then being able to take that in and say, OK, I'll talk to this, this carrier on this load. And then, like I said, from there, having the verification done to know, yes, this, this person actually does belong to this carrier. So that all those processes in place is so key to keep, you know, your yeah. freight moving safely. Yeah. And I, uh, there was a question here somebody asked what's the TMS we're showing so this this is uh just a couple screenshots from the MCP my carrier portal uh interface uh that you know kind of says whether contacts are verified and uh some other things as far as risk assessment goes uh the other piece is um uh, I'll just kind of hop back here this is this is just a screenshot of our application um it's not not a TMS we integrate with TMSs so I just wanted to kind of clear that up there somebody also had another question here. I don't know how to answer this one. Uh, <laughs> so there's two. Uh, Danielle, I'll pass this one to you. So what kind of liability does my carrier portal have in place if we use these services and we still have an issue with a scam carrier? That's a good question. So really with our service, it's where we have these risks popping up, telling you, hey, look into this, look into that. But you do have a ability to override that and still set up the carrier kind of like free will, I guess. Um, so you're able to, you know, set up a carrier outside of your risk assessment. So it really comes down to as far as liability with MCP is, is it, it did you have those warning signs? Was it that the, you know, you're, you just overlooked them and did not do the right uh, processes? And so part of our, pro part of our onboarding, whenever you become a customer is our training program teaching you, hey, when you see this, this warning sign, you know, ask these questions or take this next step. So kind of knowing exactly how to vet that way you're really not running into these issues because you're doing that, um, you know, verification on who you're talking to, as well as like a VIN verification. And I know we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, so the main thing with uh, my care portals liability is like the insurance part. So if there's something on our end that we're entering in wrong, that's where MCP steps in and, you know, takes liability for that. Um, but if it's something where, you know, hey, you, you decided to go with this guy, even though there were warning flags, it's kind of on you, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, so there's another question there that, <clears throat> but addressing this part, like who's who's has liability if they still have a scammer or a scam carrier, like I, I try to say like, well, where did, what was the root cause of having that? Is it, It's right. not like the application. The other question says it's a people process and technology issue. So it's like, what was the process? Like, did you, where did that carrier come from? I was talking to somebody before they said 99% of their problems comes from a load board carrier. And it's like, the, those are the one and dones that they, 
they have no mm-hmm. relationship with and it's like how do they get out of that and yeah it is a people process and technology issue we talk about change management all the time but it's yeah. it's like it's it's really the reason why people keep going to load boards is because it's it's easy that's what they're used to doing and it drives options for them but are they the best ones and it's like it, it's yes and no it depends on the situation but like the information like what we're talking about here contact validation and uh knowing all this information about a carrier risk assessment like if you're still having to go through all that stuff there's a better way to do that to where all of that is already vetted for you the options that come mm-hmm. through are already they already meet your criteria so there's i mean when, when you think of like how did that scam carrier that that fraud fraudulent carrier even get in in the first place like was it where did it come from I'll ask, I'll ask uh, for if, if you want to share, did that carry come from a load board? Curious. Um, uh, but yeah. there's another, another question here um, about uh, if, if uh, MCP is a product by, if they can get it through the TIA and if you guys integrate with Rose Rocket, I, I assume so. Uh, Rose Rocket, we're actually still in the process of integrating with them. I know they had some development things they're pushing forward uh, first, but I believe we're right there on the next um, integration. So that's coming. You can even push, you know, talk to them and say, hey, let's get this going. Um, It's not a product directly through TIA. We're our own separate company. Um, But yeah, if you, I know at the end of this whole thing, though, we'll provide more information on how to contact us from here. Um, But I just want a real real fast comment on the technologically and the processes, if I can talk. Um, I think really the biggest thing is have had an issue i mean it it really could be where that scammer or that person i mean that may have no warning signs but it is just like that guy's a bad guy you know he's held on to the mc for so long you know has been running freight legitly and then all of a sudden one day wakes up and says hey i'm actually going to do something totally different and you know see how much money i can get by doing this so there's you know certain things you can and check and have warning signs for, but there's sometimes where people just kind of go rogue and, and that's unfortunate, but I usually, I will say probably like 95% of the time, 96% of the time, it's, there was some sort of red flag that popped up with those carriers. And it's really knowing in your processes, knowing what to do when you have that red flag, how do you determine if they're good or bad, knowing exactly what truck is, you know, actually hauling your freight. Um, so your processes in place. Yeah. It's a great segue. Uh, let's go a little further into uh, <laughs> risk reduction and understanding red flags on common ones, and what do we do if there aren't any flags? And I, I've heard, I've heard all of them, um, but you know, great one too. If there are situations that you've experienced, and I thank you everyone for adding comments. Like it's it helps keep the conversation moving. But if you've seen like some of these red flags that you've seen on your side, or like a situation that you had and you didn't see any flags was there on uh, an alternative and maybe just share some experiences that you guys have seen. I, I know for common one is uh, rates are too low. Uh, it's too good to be true. <laughs> I know I had a, uh, I had a carrier before it, it wasn't necessarily a, a fraudulent carrier, but it was a, a carrier that I knew, man, if we put this carrier on this load, there's a high likelihood that like we're getting it back the day of or something or something the, happened. yeah. Or the trailer has holes. I don't know. It's like, there's, uh, there's a very high likelihood. They, they were a good carrier on some lanes, but like, I mean, well, even it's... four carriers, like if a broker is giving you like three times more than what's posted on a low board, something's going on there. You know, it's, it goes yeah. both ways. Yeah. Any type of weird rates is definitely a red flag for sure. Yeah. And, and it's um the other one is uh like fuel advances. I, I had people before that would try to like expedite it. Like they would talk about it on the conversation. Sure. It was like a cross country load and you need fuel, but I, I think there are a lot of other better programs these days. Like there's like mm-hmm. some, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but a fuel card. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, plug that in uh, to the <laughs> chat. I forgot what it was called. It's some, some like fuel card that carriers can get and it's like free for them and uh to, to get fuel because other than uh, a fuel advance like it's it's not really a good way to do it and so i had a carrier who was like um they said uh they they it was very weird like they picked up the load i guess i mean somebody picked the load up and the shipper was confused and like they had picked it up and um they fabricated the bol 
and i don't know how they like i sent it to the shipper and they're like yep that's that's the one and they <laughs> they're like yeah it's picked up thanks and lo and behold we we're like all right here's your fuel advance and uh never heard back from that carrier again uh yeah. turns out like the next day or i think it was a partial load or something and they the shipper was like uh the warehouse worker was like hey this is still in our dock like is this getting out or anything and it was it was just it was a nightmare. Um, and quick pay is also real scary nowadays, kind of like the double brokering situation they had. Like if you're quick paying a carrier quicker than you can verify or have the actual carrier reach out to you and say, hey, I actually ran this load, you will be double paying because you have to pay that carrier. Um, so quick pay, fuel advances, you know, all that stuff is, I'd be <laughs> super hesitant about doing. <laughs> risky, risky. Yeah. Risky. Another one is, uh, uh, I, lo I love it when they say, um, hey, this has to be a, this has to be a team load. You have two drivers, right? Oh yeah. Strong, strong solo, strong solo or strong team, yeah. whatever it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so there was an example I had, uh, I think it was a, an opening for a hotel, uh, grand opening or something in like New York or somewhere. And they had to shuttle the, the furniture, from California all the way over and we had our own tracking built out and uh they were moving along and then all of a sudden just broke down I guess broke down and they stopped moving and I was like hey this has to be there like in a couple of days like I could probably get like by one more day or something but like the, yeah. the dispatcher was never never honest with me and it, it was just like everything he told me was a complete lie at like I you know, I try to do my best and believe people and, and like, but when our system's telling us that like, Hey, you're not, your driver is not moving. Like I'm yeah. looking at right here. <laughs> I'm physically not there, but turns out like the guy was like, yeah, he, he was in communication with the driver the whole time. And he was like, it must be just going through mountains. Couldn't, couldn't reach him or something. And it, it was just a, it was a nightmare. So like, yeah. even if anyone has any tips on like, teams like i i don't do a lot of team freight but like even just having i don't know maybe i mean we all have these these days i mean just take a picture of your drivers by the cab or something just to like i don't know i mean something right like well, that's just... why we have that vim verification honestly it's more than because even like those pictures i mean they can i've i've definitely seen it as a broker where they photoshop it or i'm like hey i saw the same picture the other day like they're obviously getting it off of google um so i think you know that's definitely like that's why basically we created that VIN verification in our system. So making sure that whatever information you're getting ahead of time and you're verifying different things, you know, you're taking all those different steps. I know we yeah. had a comment in here um, on the chat, kind of other common red flags to look for. Do you want to read those off or do you want me to? Uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Danielle. I'm, okay. I can't see it. So. Um, so authority under 12 months so in a new carrier. Yeah. And of course, like a lot of these things, it does not always mean they're a bad guy. I definitely don't think that there's a lot of great carriers that decided to go out on their own. Do I say turn everybody down? No. However, you know, in that case, because you're brand new, you do need to do extra vetting. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different processes that we teach in our training too, but like having these processes in place for those brand new carriers, but knowing ahead of time they're new, we got to take this a different way. Yeah. Um, another one that they wrote is the recent changes in FMCSA contact information. Um, I know we had also a Q&A thing about if the FMCSA gets hacked. So really the biggest thing there is having some sort of system, like whether it's MCP or somebody else, someone that is telling you that this information has been changed, calling like the old phone number, contacting the old email address, verifying, hey, was this you actually that made the change? Um, and even like if the, you know, maybe there's an ownership change that maybe the carrier looked great before, but they just sold their MC and now who knows how the new carrier is going to, or the new owner is going to operate. Um, yeah. so yeah, those are definitely some red flags. And really, if you see, especially ownership change, like I would treat them as if they're a brand new carrier, like they have to do something totally different, even if they have a ton of history. Yeah. Um, Another one is um, bad inspection to truck ratio. I know a lot of people in the industry talk about if they have no inspections, that being a red flag. Um, a lot of carriers are like, well, you know, it's harder to get in inspections nowadays. Things have changed with DOT. And once again, it's if they have that alert, okay, well, then this is our next process. Having those different processes in place for your regular reps on the floor, not only just your compliance team. That way, those reps are taking those options to your compliance team and already having the vetting done. Um, yeah. Last one on here was the virtual addresses. 
for uh, their business address. Of course, that's illegal. Um, and we actually integrate with Freight Validate and they do a great job at making sure that if the address is a virtual address, hey, this is illegal, you're, you know, we had actually a, a customer um, who was setting up a carrier. Carrier's been in business for like 40 years or something crazy. And um, they, through Freight Validate, had the Red X like saying not to set them up. And whenever you look it up, they had a virtual address. And they actually had a virtual address for like, I don't know, however long they've been in business, like I said, it's like 30 years or something. And um, they're like, we've never been notified by FMCSA that we have a virtual address and that's illegal. Like we had no idea. So I think even if you have that red flag, you know, hey, I need, you need to get this corrected because it is illegal. So having, like I said, those processes in place. So there's so many different scenarios that can happen, but making sure your team knows what to do whenever you have these red flags is um, so big. Yeah, I think the the comment there is like they've got to have a history. Like when you look at quick pays, the other thing is like I, I've talked to carriers before. I, I think it was when I was at Robinson. The guy was like, I think they required like you got to be in business for like a year before we we could even haul a load with you. And it was like the driver was like, how do I if nobody's willing to give me a chance? Like how can I, I how can I do this? Like. And it get, when we talk about the history, references, man, like, I mean, brokers, you know, we we provide references for our new customers. Like, hey, you can talk to our customers. Like, I would rather you talk to our customers because they can tell you how it's been better than I can. And even as, as carriers, like, carriers have to have references too. I mean, I'm sure there's a broker that they've worked with or even like as a broker, like, call those references. And like, like Danielle was saying, it's not, it's not that it's a bad carrier, but if, if they have references that they can talk to, like, at least, you know, that that's a real person. It's not a, um, I don't know, AI trying to pick up your load. Um, Danielle, there was a question, virtual address. How would you define yeah. that? Uh, so if they're using like a, uh, you know, like a UPS store, basically it's not a real house. Like it could be our real location, like they could be using a UPS, a Staples, um, post office, uh, really anything like that. And, and that's mainly for their um, business address, like their mailing address. Of course, they can use a PO box and stuff, but their physical address needs to be a physical location, not just some, some box that you paid for that with a fake name or something like that. This, the, the FMCSA, the reason why they're required, they need to be able to you know basically hunt you down if they need to. Um, so, yeah. So that's that was a good point. Um, I, I think too, like even, I think you mentioned this, like if you're calling a, a dispatch service, does it sound like you're calling a dispatch center with 15 yeah. dispatchers when, whenever you're listening into the background? I mean, if if the MC they're giving you only has one truck or the DOT has one truck, like, and there's that's 15 people point. in the back, <laughs> like what, what? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. And yeah. the, what usually happens then is, the response speed is either too fast. Sometimes it can be too fast. Like, hey, send it over, send it over. And I, I've been guilty of sending uh, a driver to the pickup location without having them set up. I had full faith that oh, they yeah, were going to be one. set up, but yeah, but it's a uh, yeah, hot one. Everything needed to go yesterday, and yep. like, I mean, just we we shouldn't. I, I think the reason why I did it was because I knew it was going to take forever to get that guy set up. And like, he wasn't set up. We had to, we didn't have MCP or anything. And it was just like, we had to do these packets. And like, I think that was out of desperation. I sent somebody there. Great, grateful. Everything went okay. But still like yeah. in the, those situations where they're like pressing you for the rate con or the pickup number or driver's already there. Like, dude, I didn't even send you the information yet. I know we can get hasty to to just send it out, but like we still have to like have our checks and balances to make sure that we're following that process. There, there was a, even yeah, go ahead. Sorry, and even communicating with your shipper. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you're like, hey, I either have this option that oh, uh, they I don't have this, this, and this yet. They're taking their time, or I have you know, or I have to take a little bit longer. Like these are my two options. I know it's a hot load, but this is what I have. I mean, even involving your shipper in those decision so that way i mean honestly most of the time they're gonna be like okay well yeah we can wait we'll wait another hour or something like that or we really could yeah. ship this tomorrow, whatever so um i mean a lot of times they don't want you to take that risk so communicating over communicating with shippers a makes your 
um, ser customer service with them way better and they look at that differently, um, yeah. but also helping you avoid risk and kind of tying in your shipper if they say go with risk. Yeah, that, that's like just calling them and being transparent, like have their number ahead of time and a point mm -hmm. of contact like at the, like when you take that load just and it's a hot load and it's got to go, maybe just do, take the extra step and just ask like, Hey, is, do you have a contact at the warehouse that I can call to make sure that like this guy shows up? Cause if it's a new carrier, I want to make sure this goes smoothly or what, whatever it is. Cause you don't mm -hmm. want to be you, every, every load is your rep reputation and you got to try to protect that. I think some other things is um, uh, if you're brokering out flatbeds, I, I get a lot of like newer brokers trying to like do sort of diversify their freight mix, but like flatbeds, heavy haul, any of those opportunities, one, if you're not, if you're not well versed in it, that carrier relationship is really where that's going to come into play. Cause they're going to be the ones that can give you some advice, but also they should be the ones asking you about permits times the route, like not just booking a load and saying yes. Like e even if it's just a, a load of pipe, like I, do they have dunnage? Like, are they, is that the assumption that they have dunnage or is that the assumption that they have chains and stuff or like it should you should know everything and make sure that that carrier knows what they're talking about and again like if they somebody mentioned earlier like if they have a history in your database then you should be all right but if if they don't then they moved loads with somebody they're not just going to have everything all ready today and just like get ready to move but that, there's got to be some somebody that you can talk to there was a there was yeah. a carrier that i worked with before um like talking about sort of like a preventative step here the carrier was a great carrier of mine. I, I used them at Robinson XPO. And then I was at another brokerage where they, they shuttled like a day cab for me um, through the, through the day to haul out like 10 loads a day. And in some other, some other broker, they, some, I, I can't remember if it was an accident or safety violation or something, but their, their, uh, their status lapsed or it rolled over to like unconditional and I couldn't use them. And like, they, they knew that. And so they provided me an action plan without me having to ask. And like, that's, those that's are great funny. carriers. Like yeah. if they have action plans. Like, yeah, and they own up to it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it, it sort of goes back to what we talked about earlier, earlier. Like if they're, they're coming to you with that, that information, creativity, like those are the carriers you want to stick around, um, yeah. not, not going off to a load board. So, um, What's the, what's the next thing? I guess uh, when there aren't any red flags, right? Uh, so there was a there was a carrier you told me about Danielle that something always happens around the Fourth of July. Uh, yeah, pretty much what, every what, holiday, it seems yeah. like. What, what, yeah. So walk us through that scenario. Yeah. So there was um, well, really, it was all over like every you know uh, logistics newspaper or whatever not paper but you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and actually the FBI got involved all these things so I mean they, that carrier kind of same thing they operated before okay you know they didn't really have any they had no uh from my understanding they had no uh freight guards they didn't have any reports put in on them where somebody specifically said hey I caught them doing this so those like big red flags were not there um, but even like, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, like even just like a minor, minor thing, you should still have a process in place where you're still doing that vetting. Um, so I know with our system, like we had some red flags, but it wasn't like a big, Hey, oh my gosh, this happened. Um, now we did integrate with freight validate and with, with their system showing in our system. Now, now that carrier ahead of time, we would have been able to see them as a red X. Nobody would have been able to set up with them. Um, and because that carrier basically had a big web of carriers they were, they were affiliated with, but not disclosing that to the FMCSA, which is illegal. You know, it's a big whole thing. And really you're, we're pulling that or free validate is pulling that from um, actual business license, not just, Hey, what do they enter in FMCSA? Because unfortunately FMCSA is not doing everything they should do. So um, like I said, even like a minor red flag that you see or a minor thing, having a conversation, doing those processes, like it may seem repetitive and a lot of carriers come out great. That's awesome. But it takes that one time. And then, you know, you could lose a, not only just a claim, but you could lose a whole customer for it. So it really takes doing your due diligence every time. Yeah. And it, that same carrier I'd, I'd looked up um, and so I was talking to somebody about this before and they're like, like I didn't have any flags and like, what, what could I have done? And I'm like, well, 
there were flags. You just weren't looking in the right place. And right. I, I, that same carrier wouldn't have even shown up in our database because they don't run freight regular enough. And it's it's hard to point out, like, is this carrier a repeat carrier if you don't have historical data? Like, if you're just starting off or you're only doing a couple thousand loads a month, there's a high chance that you don't know that that carrier is actually running a lot of freights. And that mm-hmm. that's where a network outside of your own what you're running, that's where a network comes into play. And and if a carrier is running freight with other brokers and, and meets your quality standards, you should be all right. But if if that carrier is is that everywhere carrier, and, and one of the reasons why we don't pull those in really, because they don't have a pattern. They don't have any trend that's going to tell me that like, hey, this guy does run a lot of freight with a lot of other brokers. And if I don't have that, then probably there's no, there's aren't there aren't too many places to look and it takes a lot of time to go go and look but it's still still risky and i think like you know when, when i think back of like that uh oh i almost said that carrier name i wasn't gonna <laughs> I, was, I, had, I had to skirt that one um but the carrier that like kept taking those loads for me like it was a regular carrier and i think we'll talk about this in a second but the behavior of that carrier they had a high bounce rate like th- those are signs that like, I-, I don't know if they only book one load with me and they only bounce, z- they don't b- bounce on any loads. Like that seems like a good carrier, but across mm-hmm. a network, if that carrier has 200 trucks and their bounce rate is higher than, I don't know, 5% or something, whatever number you want to use, like that can tie into the decision. Do I go with somebody else? And that that's yeah. like, we're calling references and taking the time to do those QA calls and stuff. Uh, comes having that tech stack really where you can see yeah. the community of people yeah yeah so let, let's take a situation here i guess where uh in that case every load had to go yesterday um and what are you doing differently than you know when a carrier calls in or emails you and you have no clue who's on the other end um back to the story you know i was sitting with that customer who i don't know spent a couple hours a day just working with random carriers that they shouldn't be. Um, but how we've we've actually launched a, uh, or not launched, but put together a, an advisory group. Um, I think most of them use MCP um, back in May, uh, where we helped, they helped us tackle this mission of like, you know, they need a better way to approach carriers and they also want to rely less on load boards. And what we came to is a quality score. So in the, actually in the first, I think, 30 days that we launched that, we saw an increase of 22% more carriers reached that all met wow. this high quality standard. So when we look at like a quality score, we take in like your risk assessment that assume you're a My Carrier Portal customer, you set that criteria up. But in on our side, how well is that carrier behaving across other brokers? If you've never booked them before, you don't have the history. But in, in a network of a couple hundred thousand loads a month, chances are likely that it's it's going to show to where we know that like hey this carrier maybe not set up with you but they've booked five loads in the network their fall off rate is less than one percent they're engaging highly with our system and replying and clicking and doing things like that they're also booking almost 10 percent of their freight digitally like that sort of footprint is what can help you identify uh quality and and not sacrifice service uh it it's sort of just how you're trying to gather all that information uh yeah thanks danielle yeah this is another little quick tidbit from our application uh how we look at the quality score um i guess for the the other thing i think another slide that we have here as we wrap up but uh, was the vin number verification and geolocation i think is something you you brought up uh that you guys released lately uh like even detecting where the packet was submitted i didn't even know that yeah. existed. like that's that's pretty cool can you talk talk yeah i i love like this is like whenever i was a broker this would have been like such a game changer for me so um the vin verification it's kind of like when in doubt or hey i've never ran a load with this guy i don't know who this guy is or after three loads i stopped doing this whatever your process is i definitely recommend at least at some point you do this um the first thing is um the vin verification so once you get that driver's phone number send a text through my care portal um, and then they basically get a text that says, hey, send us a picture of your truck showing your VIN number. It has to be a live photo. Kind of like I said earlier, like avoiding those Photoshops or those Google images that they pull up. And you can see kind of on the left there um, where the um, 
like the red truck is. I can see this guy's got a red truck. I also see his IP address and then he allowed his geolocation. So I actually have his precise location. You can actually click on that map. It opens up Google map, see where he was standing at that time. Um, and if they do not allow their location, which to me is a red flag, but if they don't allow it, we're pulling in the IP address. So you at least get an air, like an idea of where they're located at based on the IP address. IP addresses are not as accurate at all. So I would definitely push that geolocation. Like if the, for me, if the driver did not, allow their location that's drivers are used to sharing their locations especially with tracking so that's a red flag hey i need you to resubmit it allow your location um in this instance we're running that bin and it shows does it belong to this carrier does it belong to somebody else um so like you can see on this one it does not belong to this carrier it belongs to that mts trucking um you can see on that second image and with this, I mean, it could be, you know, at that point, I have a conversation with the dispatcher, you know, hey, why does this truck show MTS trucking? You know, it could be, you know, it doesn't always have to be a bad guy. It's not always a double brokering situation. It could be, hey, this is our owner op. Okay, great. Well, provide me with the, um, you know, lease agreement. Pro provide me with what type of um, insurance that they have. Like, I need that information just in case if I have a claim, you're not trying to skirt around it, you know, later on being like, oh, well, you don't have a contract with this company. You know, you're preventing all those issues ahead of time. So it's not yeah. just double brokering. Of course, that's a big, you know, big thing now. You want to prevent that, of course. This is the best way to do that. But also, it could be, it could be legit. Let's have that conversation, get those documentation in. Um, so that's the top part. And then the last image is the packet. So once they actually complete the packet, we're also pulling in the IP address and then giving the um, the dispatcher or whoever's filling out the packet um, the con the chance to also show their location. So you'll see that kind of at the bottom. If the IP address isn't being pulled or if they're not given the geolocation, we're pulling from the IP address. But being able to see there too, like maybe it's the driver who's filling out the packet on their phone. Um, I can see then as well, hey, this is matching up. Um, whenever I pull up that map, I like to always see, okay, does the location city and state match the city and state that they're, the company is listed in? If it's not, okay, hey, dispatcher, where are you at? Where are you based out of? Having that conversation with them. If they're like, oh, you know, I'm actually in Chicago and, you know, they're tracking in Cincinnati, you know, it's like, okay, well, you like, you know, you just lied to me. That's a huge red flag to me. I'm looking for somebody else. Like I'm not even taking a chance. The strong yeah. solo. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, just be honest. I mean, it, yeah. people work remote now, and I think some dispatchers want to hide that. But just tell me the truth where you're located at, and you know we're going to be good from there. Yeah, uh, Jamie, if you can uh, launch that second poll, we're going to kind of run through the last part rather briefly. Um, so this this poll, do you prefer working with repeat carriers or new carriers? Um, fun story. I was trying to find a duplicate image of two Legos back to back, and my kid was playing Lego Batman. Um, and I couldn't find any pictures, so I, I grabbed his two Lego Batman and took a picture. So that, those are his actual toys. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as you as you guys answer that, we're going to roll into the next uh, topic here. So we'll give it give it a little bit more more time to answer that question. Um, but this one is is kind of a, an approach to you know drive service levels, things like that. Some things that we do. Um, again, this is our snapshot of our application, Cargo Chief. Uh, we have things like to tier your carriers, to group them in waterfalls. So that way you're the carriers that you talk to and communicate with over load boards. Like, again, it's not a bad product. It's just like, what are you doing next? Like that conversation usually is like, hey, that doesn't work today. Okay, bye. And then out of sight, out of mind, you never remember who that carrier is again. But you, there are better ways to pull in that information to where you, you didn't just waste that conversation to where you can actually like group your carriers and kind of build out this rolodex and procured list so that way you can go back to those carriers and make sure you're offering those that spent the time to talk to you give them a first crack at the freight and not rather than going to a market um i guess danielle what mm -hmm. what uh, i know you back when you were booking freight any any tips on how you how you guys looked at core carrier progression yeah our biggest thing was kind of like once they ran three loads with us that we had a little bit of a history with them and at really after even the first load, like, hey, you delivered this great, you did a good job. I'm going to start having a uh, conversation with you. Hey, where do you guys normally run? Just starting that starting that conversation initially. And then really after for sure three runs, we started doing it. We're like, hey, you're added to our core list. And here's our loads that we have coming out. Like, where's your trucks at? Like really making first calls out of the day should be your core, however many carriers where are your trucks at today. Okay, great. I mean, that was usually like the first 30 minutes to an hour of my day. 
from there, I worked you know, whatever location over at that point, you know, going through whatever process I had. So I think the repeat carriers and having like a core group, I mean, you really become friends with them too. So it's, it makes your day fun. So it sounds yeah. like um, so 84 uh, percent that answered would rather repeat carriers. Now the, the question is, how much of your freight are you posting? Because I guarantee you, it's not only 16 percent. It's probably more like, yeah, you want 80 percent repeat carriers, but you're also posting 80 percent of your freight. So like, how, what are you doing to like try to shore that that load to carry ratio up? It's another exercise to think about how much how much freight do you actually post, and then how many new carriers are you adding versus how many loads you ran? So there, there's always ways to look at like where, you know, back to the question earlier of the scam carrier, where was the cause of it? Like, is my, do I need to stop posting as much or am I good on, on that? Like I'm, I'm not posting as much freight. I'm just not like bringing in the right carriers. So something to think about. Um, I think uh, last question here. Uh, if you, If anyone wants to hear more about our integration, uh, how my carrier portal, my carrier portal, man, that's a hard one, huh? Uh, <laughs> how, how we work together um, and, you know, help you improve your carrier quality um, and reduce risk. Uh, let us know, yes or no, and uh, we'll reach out. Um, but for any of those that uh, want to reach out to us on LinkedIn or anything, um, find us on LinkedIn, go to our websites, cargochief.com or mycarrierportal.com. Um Danielle, any any last comments you want to share with anybody and the audience? Uh, any takeaways or anything? Uh, I mean, really, even if you're an existing customer, I mean, I think a lot of times you need to do a refresher on this. I, I can't stress enough our training and, you know, really knowing how to use our tool because, I mean, I can give you a hammer, but you don't know how to build a house until you're taught. So I think really, even if you've been a customer for a long time, scheduling something with our training team and just doing a refresher and then, you know, if you don't have a vetting tool, I mean, even if you don't choose us, like have whoever, but you you got to have something out there. It's just, it's necessary. And especially even for like the core carriers or repeat carriers, not all of them will tell you that, hey, my safety score dropped. They, they're not all like that. So having something that gives you updates on your existing carrier base too, having that monitoring system um, is just so important. <laughs> Can't yeah. Stress it enough. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a spreadsheet or whatever, just start doing something. Uh, you can't, can't just, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can't just rely on that forever. Um, but that that's uh, that puts us over the hour here. Um, gonna it looks like we answered most of the questions as we came through. I uh, went through the presentation today. So again, if anyone else wants to reach out to us, uh, we'll reach out to those that said you want more information. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So here's to uh, less risk, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good week, and uh, we'll talk next time. Bye. Um, all right. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Um, I will be sending out an email with instructions on how you can view the recording of this once that is all uploaded. But thanks, everyone, for coming today. Thanks a lot to Cargo Chief uh, for sponsoring this webinar today. Yes. And uh, Chris and Danielle, thanks a lot for presenting today. It was uh, yeah, really great. Yeah, it was fun. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, hope everyone has a good rest of your day and I'll see you yeah. next time. Bye. See thanks. You. Bye. Bye.